Of all the plants in the world, orchids are perhaps the most seductive. No other group of plants has captivated horticulturalists quite like orchids. There are at least 28,000 species of orchids that occur across the globe, and many new species continue to be found every year. From the equator to the high latitudes to mountaintops, The tropics has by far the greatest concentration and many of the most spectacular species of orchids. For hundreds of years, orchids have been cultivated and prized by growers across the world. During the 19th century, Victorian nurseries sent forth plant hunters, sometimes to specifically collect a single orchid species. Orchids were then cultivated and sold for enormous sums of money. Sometimes a single plant would fetch more than an average labourer's entire annual wage. Interest in orchids has never been greater than today. At least 100,000 hybrids and cultivars have been produced in captivity, and hundreds of orchid societies and nurseries cater for orchid growers across the globe. Through decades of breeding and complex hybridisation programmes, Horticulturalists have created some of the most exquisitely beautiful flowers imaginable. In the wild, orchids come in an immense range of shapes, sizes and colours. Paphiopedalum are among the most spectacular of all orchids. They are a diverse genus of slipper orchids with spectacular petals. Paphiopedalum lowii has petals with beautiful spots. Paphiopedalum Rothschildianum has exquisite stripes, and Paphiopedalum sandarianum is perhaps the most impressive of all. It can have curly petals over one metre long. Explorers and plant hunters searched and discovered these rare slipper orchids at the end of the 19th century. They were highly prized, and as recently as the late 1990s, they often sold for thousands of US dollars per plant, before tissue culture enabled mass propagation. The incredible flowers of orchids did not evolve to dazzle our eyes. Many evolved along very specific ecological lines, often to attract very particular pollinators. For example, the flying duck orchid, which evolved its unique shape to attract a particular group of tinnid wasps or bee orchids, which evolved specifically to deceive male bees. The degree to which orchids can be specific to a particular pollinator is incredible. Charles Darwin studied orchids extensively. When this orchid, Angraecum sesquipedale, was discovered, he noted its spur, which can be up to 43 centimetres long, but contains only a small amount of nectar at its very bottom. Darwin predicted that the orchid was pollinated by a very special moth with an unusually long proboscis, unknown at the time. Sure enough, 21 years after Darwin's death, exactly such a moth was discovered, a sphinx moth that was named Xanthopan morganii predictor in honour of Darwin's prediction. Other orchids are perhaps a little less easy to explain, Coincidentally, some resemble the faces of monkeys. Others appear as dancing ladies, or even little naked men. A small number of orchids have iridescent leaves that sparkle blue. Or really extraordinary flowers that emerge beneath shell-shaped leaves. A few orchids have mostly or completely lost their leaves and instead grow epiphytically and have green photosynthetic roots. Some orchids grow without needing any soil at all, such as the Vanda group of orchids that have exquisite flowers, while enamel orchids have stunning shiny petals that look as if they have an enamel glaze. While orchids are famed for their exquisite flowers with flamboyant colours and forms, the jewel orchids of the genus Ludicia produce rather small and inconspicuous flowers, but beautiful leaves with intricate jewel-like patterns. 
Believe it or not, you've probably eaten an orchid recently. Vanilla is used in a wide variety of products, from ice cream to Coca-Cola. There are several vanilla orchids, but the one most often used for flavoring is vanilla planifolia. The vanilla pods are actually the seed pods of the plant, which turn brown and are fermented to produce that wonderful vanilla flavor. Vanilla planifolia naturally grows in Central America, and the fermentation process was developed hundreds of years ago by the Aztecs. Cultivation of orchids has come a long way since Aztec times. Today, hundreds of millions of orchids are grown and sold around the world, and ever more continue to be bred. Many tropical orchids are very easy to grow at home on your windowsills, or in a greenhouse or shade house. Each orchid group has its own specific cultivation requirements, but generally speaking, many tropical orchids require strong light levels, high humidity, warm temperatures, a loose substrate that drains freely, and regular watering and feeding with fertilizer. If these basic requirements are met, you'll be able to grow your very own display of stunning orchid flowers. Good luck and happy growing.